Traffic now. Wait for that to go by. Two cars on the right. Nothing on the left. Nothing on the left still. So we're all clear. Oh. When I have the conversation with you here. The factors involved. My focusing on the conversation while I'm driving. But here's the thing. Because the thoughts are still going on in my mind. There's a tendency for me to become introverted. In other words, go into my mind while I'm, uh, while I'm driving, so I need to actually have a verbal conversation. So this actually helps keep my concentration present and accounted for. In other words, I'm not going into my mind uh, thinking about all these different things that uh, we're having a discussion about. Because the, the conversation goes on in my mind regardless. So you're hearing what I'm thinking. And that's what this is, this is a verbalization of my thoughts. So, <laughs> I don't know how exciting that is, but otherwise that's what it is, that's the reality of it. And it's not bad, it's 90 degrees out, I'm okay. Uh, the pants aren't that bad, the riding pants. I know it's been hot like this for a long time in Florida, or in uh, you know, Utah, uh, in, uh, or just the Arizona, but this is our first bit of 90 degree weather, it looks like the heat is going to stay around here for a while, and it looks like we're going to enter another atmospheric shift. I haven't seen one of these uh, of this magnitude in a long time, uh, and it has to do with the sun uh, becoming more active than usual. So uh, the question is, uh, what's next? And right now we're doing a little bit of the chit chat. Nothing heavy right now, probably maybe on the way back. Sometimes you know, I notice the vlogs, when, when I'm, we're coming, there's not much in terms of the actual uh, conversation, in terms of the content. But it gets heavier when we come back. That's because I've had a chance to wake up, had got something to eat. 
and uh, got some things that sort of developed in that time frame that we can sort of talk about and mull over as time goes by. Not like this, my parents' house, so it reminds me a lot of uh, going to my cousin's house, my cousin Maria's house in Boston. I don't know why, but just kind of it just, the whole event, the whole uh, time period just sort of uh, pops into my mind almost instantaneously. density that the cold wind does, so it doesn't necessarily pack a punch as the cold one does as well. But still, nonetheless, you can feel it, you can hear it, so I've got to make sure I speak appropriately. Very nice. It, it, the, the wind cools you off, so as you're riding, it, it it's it's not bad at all. It's just when you're stopped, that's when you uh, uh, begin to feel the the, uh, the heat. That's not it's not that bad. It, it, it's tolerable. You can sort of adjust to it.
something to hold on to, like a railing or something like that, that's a bit of sufficient height, uh, I'll end up going over because I forget where I am. I often, I've often, as a walking bump, I'm the person who bumps into things and is kind of uh, clumsy. And it's just, the clumsiness is typically I'm not paying attention. The way I should be, but anyways, that's kind of the way things are. And uh, such is life. <laughs> Experiences are always the order of the day. When you're an observer, you observe things and notice things that others are just uh, very simple. does come into these things in terms of 
the gun cases being a personality that you can now use as a reference. Sometimes you need, in terms of dealing with people in different situations and understandings, including what's called the intellectual, you can use an intellectual like Ryan LeBron as a sort of a mold or a standard by which you can measure, measure others by. You know, say standards are not necessarily the golden rule or, or absolute, they're simply a, huh? a standard. And an A standard, not the standard. And Lionel actually fits this uh, uh, rule uh, very well that he is a standard to be considered when you're dealing with the discussion of intellectuals. applies again tonight, but this was uh, a BBC thing, uh, but of course it, it ends up playing up on PBS. PBS views itself, again, as, PBS is a uh, fashion of intellectualism. It views itself as culture, so therefore it has to have everything that culture has in it. And of course, when they make something new now, they do a hatchet job on the history. And it's more about this whole thing called virtue signaling. Now, the, the, the virtual signaling that we haven't talked about, virtue signaling, that's actually pretense. This is how we can connect it. I just sort of, as I was mulling it, through my, mulling it over, I realized that the uh, Pretense is virtue signaling. That's what we see today. The virtue, the virtual signaling that we see today, again, is not something that's new. It's been around for a significant, significantly long time, because we see it as pretense. It's the things you pretend to be. And in many cases, it's you pre the, the pretense is about the, the the whole thing of pretending to be virtuous. So virtues. Uh, and y y your, your, your virtuousness is the pretense. So, this is what you see the liberals as virtue signaling. Their care for others. When there really isn't any care for others, it's the primary thing for pretense is about promoting yourself. Well, it's your own self interest, it's ego. One can't just walk around and be egotistical. You can't show that you're egotistical. What you have to do is you pretend to be virtuous, and it's in the underneath. It's the what's called the underlying subtext. This is where you find who the person truly is, and that the virtue is simply being signaled that this is the pretense and not the reality of the person. Of course, some people like Lionel LeBron doesn't have any pretense in, in some respects. He is, in many ways, outright, openly rude. And this is what you see in his shows. Is this rudeness that sort of attracts people to his things. There are people... A lot of people were angry with the situation that's going on. The thing is, the anger doesn't doesn't resolve anything. Anger does not resolve things. Neither does hatred, jealousy, or any of these other things. There is no resolution. 
in these things. As a matter of fact, they're self perpetuating Anger simply creates more anger. Violence creates more violence. Jealousy creates more jealousy. It doesn't end. And that's why they're, they're basically called self perpetuating because they generate these negative feelings and they feed off it. It, it feeds off itself. It's in many ways they call, call it cannibalistic. Once again, this is a difficult thing to sort of bring forward. But it's difficult to understand. And as you sit, sort of sit through the day, different things that go on, people have different discussions, and you listen to the discussions, and see how people who have observed the same thing, watched the same thing, have come to different points of view on the same thing that they've experienced. And this was true of the apostles. The apostles all had different, even though they experienced Christ and they all became apostles, their understanding, their points of view were all different. And this is something very difficult to understand uh, for e even the very, well, the well, those are well, the staunchest of Christians who would argue that they're all, they were all exactly in agreement with Christ. But they weren't, because they had different views, different experiences. And this is what makes some of the difficulties in understanding uh, the nature of Christ. And, and under, but again, it's not an issue of intellectual understanding. It's an, in, it's, a, it's an issue of experience. A path has to be walked. And without walking that path, there is no understanding. The intellect goes no further. The intellect needs the experience of the path in order to understand what's happening. Without that, there is no understanding, there is no uh, movement forward uh, in any of the senses that we talk about in terms of That's always a difficult part to get through. If somebody bumps you all in a row, it knocks you around. What we fail to understand is how different points of view do not, don't have to necessarily negate the reality of something else or, or, or the thing that they're observing. It just simply means they don't see everything. And the thing is, nobody sees everything. But that also, at the same time, doesn't mean that everybody is right. You see in, in these older movies, and particularly this one now wasn't an older one, this, in, in terms of on PBS, was a recreation of something that was old. Uh, and they brought in what we'll call the modern sensibilities. And the modern sensibilities have looked at the pretense of the old world and said there's no reason for the pretense anymore. And now, they just open evil. The left-hand path has, is now openly practiced, openly existing, and there's no need to pretend anymore. Although you still do have the pretense of the individuals involved.